Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet commended His Majesty the King's continued appreciation of frontliners and their contribution to the success of the national mitigation efforts. In this regard, the cabinet noted His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's directives to grant two additional promotional ranks in the civil service or equivalent for frontliners in Bahrain, a step that recognizes their efforts to safeguard the health of all. The cabinet noted the progress of the kingdom's national vaccination campaign, which has to date administered 2 million vaccine doses with six, within six months of its launch, protecting 69.4% of the total population with at least one dose. The cabinet praised citizens and residents share responsibility in this regard. The meeting welcomed the outcomes of His Royal Highness's recent visit to the UK, which included meetings with His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs of the UK, which has furthered the bilateral cooperation and open new opportunities across various sectors between Bahrain and the UK. The cabinet then congratulated students who completed their school year with, an outsta with outstanding grades, despite the challenges presented by the global spread of the COVID-19, and commended the efforts of the Ministry of Education in ensuring the academic year has ended smoothly. It emphasized the importance of continuing to implement sustainable infrastructural and energy projects in line with the Kingdom's development goals. In this regard, the cabinet highlighted a dual phase two and Independence Water and Power Plant, which was inaugurated by His Royal Highness, adding that the project supports ongoing housing, development and investment initiatives in the Kingdom. The Cabinet reviewed developments on His Royal Highness's directives on the Forensic Audit Report on observations of the non-compliance within the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, and the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. The observations were referred to the Public Prosecution Service, the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security, and the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs, depending on jurisdiction and the nature of the violation. The Cabinet then reviewed the reports of various ministers who participated in the Second Islamic Summit on Science and Technology of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and the consultative meeting of the Arab Foreign Ministers and the meeting of the Council of the Arab, of Arab States at the ministerial level at its extraordinary session on the file of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and the meeting of the 148th session of the Ministerial Council of the GCC and the participation of the delegation of Bahrain in the 109th session of the International Label Conference, as well as participation in the fifth ministerial meeting of the Food Security Committee in the GCC. The Cabinet extended congratulations to Antonio Guterres for securing a second term of Secretary General of the UN, wishing him and the UN further success in achieving its goals. Firstly, the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU between the Kingdom of Bahrain's Ministry of Interior and the City of Miami, which aims to develop cooperation in the field of community pol policing and combating transitional crime. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the University of Bahrain and the University of Houston, which aims to enhance cooperation in academic programs, research and teaching development. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to five proposals and two legislative proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives and one proposal submitted by the Shura Council. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, expressed pleasure with the victory of the victorious Bahrain cyclist team, cyclist Sunny Colbrelli, who won the title of Italy Road Race, which was held in Imola. His Highness affirmed that the cyclist Sunny was determined to win first place in the race and make an achievement for the kingdom. He noted that the victorious cycling team is on the path to make further victories thanks to its remarkable cyclists who managed to achieve an outstanding victory in the Italian race despite the participation of an elite cyclist at the global level. His Highness also congratulated the team cyclist Mortish Moric who, for winning the Slovenia National Championship, stressing that the team's victories are a source of pride. He stated that the new achievements come as an extension of a series of successes made by the team over the past period. He added that the achievements will motivate the team to continue recording victories and ensuring their continuous presence on the podium in upcoming races. 
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa deputized a BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa to attend the graduation ceremony of the 13th Joint Command and Staff Course. The Commander in Chief deputized the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Dia bin Sagar al Naimi, to attend the graduation ceremony on his behalf. The graduation ceremony was held at the Royal Command Staff and National Defense College. The ceremony commenced with verses from the Holy Quran and then the Royal Command Staff and National Defense College Commandant, Rear Admiral Abdullah. Mansouri delivered a speech in which he affirmed that thanks to the forward-looking vision of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the BDF has become a military force that is capable of defending the nation's achievements and capabilities. He paid tribute to the Commander-in-Chief and Chairman of the Supreme Council of the Royal Command Staff and National Defense College for his constant follow-up and directives to develop the college, which has entitled it to offer the latest military curricula and programs that match those provided by its counterparts in the region, making it a good destination for military science students and a distinguished research center for military and strategic issues at all levels. After that, the Chief of Staff delivered a speech in which he conveyed the congratulations of the Commander-in-Chief to the graduates on their success in obtaining the Master's Degree in Military Sciences and praised the tremendous efforts they have exerted throughout the course. He also saluted the officers from the military forces of brotherly countries who have taken part in the course and extended thanks to them for their constructive cooperation and innovative initiatives and ideas during this session. He also asserted that their success in passing the course is a distinguished military and training momentum, which is a source of pride. He extended sincere thanks to all those who contributed to the success of the training session, including the commandant of the Royal Command, Staff and National Defense College, supervisors and teachers, wishing everyone success. The BDF Chief of Staff handed over the certificates to the graduates, in which a number of officers from Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Jordan, Egypt and Yemen participated. The Speaker of the Representatives Council for the Yezainal participated in Strategies of Achieving Food Security, Challenges and Opportunities Forum that is organized by Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat. The Speaker confirmed that the Kingdom has taken a safe, stable path during exceptional circumstances under the leadership of His Majesty the King, which made the country stable and continue to develop and prosper. She pointed out that what His Majesty addressed about food security has produced a balance that is witnessed during the COVID-19 crisis, when national capabilities were accessible to all. She praised the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister in achieving food security and translating the aspirations of His Majesty the King to implement national food production projects, such as allocating spaces for fish farming and plant production, developing national capacities in the field of food industries, and raising the percentage of national production. For his part, the Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh affirmed that the speech of His Majesty the King at the opening of the second session of the fifth legislative term drew a path for an integrated strategy for food security in the Kingdom, where His Majesty issued directives towards raising the level of food security through implementing a strategic project for national food production that aims to improve the quality of life in Bahrain. The chairman explained that the year 2020 was described as the year of food crisis as a result of the failure of international trade chains in food and its requirements due to the pandemic. He said that the Council's Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee was assigned to study food security legislative data in Bahrain with government and private agencies and relevant civil society institutions to know the reality of food security level in the Kingdom in order to achieve sustainable development goals and serve Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. Al-Saleh affirmed that such proposals aim to adopt appropriate solutions to develop areas of self-sufficiency in the food field and the availability of strategic commodities that meet the needs of citizens and residents in a sustainable manner and controlling these commodities and providing adequate stocks and quantity and quality. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa affirmed that the directors of His Majesty the King formed a roadmap to achieve food security in the Kingdom with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that the directives came to implement a strategy for national production using the most capable methods in order to overcome all challenges, especially those resulting from the pandemic. He added that the Ministerial Committee for Development Projects and Infrastructure will soon be completed the national strategy for food security in order to achieve sustainability 
Security. He announced the approval of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to establish a National Committee for Food Security that will include a number of ministers and officials. He added that the current and future initiatives with national efforts and partnership with the private sector, Bahrain will rise in the International Food Security Indicator from 45th in 2020 to 25th in 2030. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that Bahrain enjoys a good level of food security thanks to the government led by His Royal Highness and the directors of His Majesty the King. For his part, the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Dirasat, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, affirmed during the opening speech of the fourth annual forum of the center that Dirasat is known for its status and reputation as an intellectual platform for advanced research. The center also is also known for the creative initiatives it launches. He noted that the choice of food security as a theme for this year's forum is considered essential as it must be addressed at all levels. Sheikh Abdullah added that the kingdom has embodied through the vision of his majesty see the king that food security is considered a national priority that must be ensured through cooperation and coordination between the legislative and executive authorities to ensure a strategic stock of primary food commodities. He affirmed that the analysis of the current situation indicates that COVID-19 pandemic has created substantial changes to the world in an unprecedented manner. The pandemic has showcased the urgent need to ensure food security considering the high cost of import imports and its disruption from some regions and the possible recurrence of such circumstances in the future. Education Minister Dr. Majid al naimi approved the results of high school technical vocational and preparatory education. The minister expressed his appreciation to His Majesty the King for his patronage of the educational process with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He praised a continuous follow-up to education affairs from Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The minister confirmed the success of the current academic year 2020 and 2021, noting that the online learning experience that the ministry has has undertaken for the second year in a row has proven its ability to ensure the sustainability of distance learning and raise the quality and effectiveness of education based on the e-learning infrastructure through His Majesty King Hamid Project for Future Schools and Digital Empowerment. As a result of these efforts, Bahrain won the His Highness Sheikh Salem Al Ali Sabah Informatics Award at its 20th session held in Kuwait for the Ministry's Educational Portal Project Learn, which was chosen amongst the best technical projects for the year 2020 in the field of education as an electronic platform and smart application. The president of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, headed a press conference which was broadcasted on BACA's YouTube channel to announce the activities of Bahrain Summer Festival. Sheikh Hamay affirmed that the Bahrain Summer Festival will be back in its 13th edition in July and will be held remotely. She said that organizing the festival for the second year in a row remotely coincides with the completion of the Pearl Path, which will be the link for the festival, which will present many diverse activities, including theatrical, musical, and artistic performances, in addition to workshops and various creative fields. She also noted that the public can follow up on the festival's activities through social media. The Kingdom of Bahrain has intensified its national vaccination campaign in order to preserve public health and safety. The Ministry of Health stressed that safety and great effectiveness of the vaccination as well as their contribution to alleviating the symptoms of the virus. The Ministry noted that the vaccination reduces the rate of virus transmission and its and is effective in protecting and building community immunity. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by consultant of public health and epidemiology and head of immunization group, Dr. Basma Mahmoud Safar. Hello, Dr. Basma. Tell us about the progress of the vaccination campaign in addition to the good news about no registry of severe side effects by those who got vaccinated. Hello, good evening. So after the emergency authorization of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine to the age group 12 to 17 years in the Kingdom of Bahrain from the National Health Regulatory Authority after the completion of phase three clinical trial at USA and the approval of this vaccine by the Center of Disease Control in the United States and it proves around 100% efficacy against COVID infection in the clinical trial as well as a good safety profile, which is a two important element for any emergency authorization of any vaccine. And following the recommendation of the National Committee to combat COVID-19 and also the Immunization Committee in the Kingdom of Bahrain, 
this vaccine has been approved uh, from one month back to be used for this age category. And there was a high uptake of this vaccine by this age group uh, has been noticed in all the vaccination center in the kingdom with no reported serious adverse events since the start of the vaccination campaign in this age group. Most commonly reported adverse events were local reaction and some mild systemic reaction, including fever, fatigue, and headache, which occurs within one to two days post-vaccination and resolves spontaneously with mild analgesic. This indicates a high level of awareness of the residents and the citizens in the Kingdom of Bahrain to protect their children against COVID-19 infection. So we strongly recommend that parents also to continue to register their children if they were not vaccinated to provide the maximum protection for them, to protect themselves and to protect the surrounding and to, to increase the immunity in the population against COVID in order to combat this pandemic. Consultant of Public Health and Epidemiology and Head of Immunization Group, Dr. Basma Mahmoud Safar, thank you for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,043,787 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 899,514 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 7,676 with 1,062 recoveries, 465 registered new cases and 9 deaths. 244 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 220 are contacts of active cases and 1 are travel related. The Ministry expresses heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.